Close your eyes so that you can sense what's going in the body more clearly without any distractions. There may be the distractions of the sounds outside, but those are minor. Our problem is when our eyes are open, we tend to live in the world outside. And the world inside our body gets neglected. So allow that inside world to come to the fore. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, and notice where you feel the breathing in the body. And by breathing here, it's not just the air coming in and out through the nose, but it's the movement of energy through the body. Where do you feel that? Where is it clearest? Allow your attention to settle there. And then investigate the breath to see whether it's comfortable or not. You can experiment for a bit. Make it longer, shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Don't force it so much. Just allow it to be longer or shorter, whatever, until you find a rhythm that feels really good. There are some spots in the body that tend to be more sensitive than others to the breath. So locate one of those spots, and then just stay here. They talk about doing concentration in, in Pali, and they describe it as entering and dwelling. Okay, you've entered inside the body. Now you want to dwell here. Make this the place where you stay. And as with any house, you may have to leave here every now and then. But then you keep coming back. And this is your residence. When the Buddha was asked where he lived, he lived in emptiness, he said. Where you can live with the breath. When you live with the breath, that means wherever you go, you're home. The world outside may change. You may be here now and someplace else another day. But the breath is always here, so make that your dwelling. When you're dwelling here, you've got a good foundation. It's like a house that's strongly built, firmly established. Storms can come and it doesn't get blown over. You've got windows and doors that you've got to open and close. In other words, when you want to know about the world outside, you open up the windows. When there's something outside that you want to let in, you can open the door. And if there's something you don't want to let in, you don't have to open it. When the wolf comes to the door, you have to. You can say no. And your house is one that doesn't get blown down. You've got a safe place to stay. For most of us, though, our, our minds are like bus stations. Anybody can come in, anybody can go out. And they're really safe places to stay. But when you take this and make this your home, then you can be very selective as who you allow in and also what you allow out in terms of your thoughts, the words and deeds that you say based on your thoughts. You want to be very careful that if you have any animals in the house, you don't let them out. But the important thing is to realize you've got a good home wherever you go. You're always at home, as long as you're staying here. And you make it a comfortable place to stay. Just like when you're moving into an apartment, moving into a house. You want to have some furniture, you want to have a few things that make it your place, so it's a good place that you like. We well, can do that with the breath. You can think of the breath getting comfortable and then going to different parts of the body. It's like opening up new rooms in your house and then furnishing them with what you like. And this can be your dwelling place. When people ask you, where do you live, you say, I live with my breath. That's the safest place to be.